know, it's a very noisy Christmas. <laughs> Not kidding, kidding, kidding. So these 12 powers, they come from our, our ancestors of New Thought. Emma Curtis Hopkins, known as the minister to the ministers, she was very big on the number 12, the 12, 12 disciples, uh, the, the 12 servants, what have you, the 12 hours, the 12, you know, the, the 12 months, that obviously 12 is a number of completion. There's two 12 hour segments in each day. And, and so to look at that, and the Fillmore's, Unity's co-founders, they, Charles from Fillmore in particular, he really went with that 12 concept and while these are similar to the, don't worry about dripping, that's why this tablecloth's on here, uh, very similar to the chakras in many ways, but there are 12 seats of alignment to awaken to the full Christ awakening. And, and so every year we light these candles and you'll see on your sheet there, the first one is faith. Its color is a deep blue location here, pineal gland or in the middle of the brain. It's, just, it's disciple was Peter or is Peter. And as I say, faith is our yes power. Faith is our power to say yes to God, yes to glowing health, yes to prosperity, yes to every blessing the universe has waiting for me. And to all of us we say, I direct my, my yes power of faith, faith in, in the good that has always been and always is. is. The faith that multiplied the fishes and the loaves and healed the sick and the lame is actively at work in me now. I believe in the good, so I experience the good. Light a candle. Hmm. Our second power, will. Its color is silver. Its location is in the forehead on the left side, behind the left eye there. And as I say, will is our willingness to carry out our yes to God. God's will is for us to be happy, joyous, and free. So it is mine also. Everybody? Today, I am willing to remember God's will is my will. Light a candle. Understanding. Its color is gold. Uh, it's behind the right eye there. And uh, its disciple was Thomas. In asking for an understanding heart, Solomon received riches and honor, as well as the realization that he was one with God. Understanding knows how to carry out the will of God. Together, I am one with God. I know the truth. I remember the truth. I understand the truth, and I express it perfectly. I am a powerful demonstrator of all things good. Light a candle. Imagination. Its color is light blue. It's between the eyes, right up here. And its disciple is Thomas. And asking for an understanding heart. Who's talking? Oh, okay, I got lost. I was like, okay, how many voices? Because hey, people were talking. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. Imagination is our power to shape and form our dreams of good. Its color is light blue between the eyes. As we turn over these images to God, within we see them manifest in our world. All my imagination is what it changes obstacles into opportunities. Light a candle. Zeal. Its color is orange. Its location is in the back of the brain. Top of the neck. Imagine, uh, zeal is the fuel that propels us toward our successes in life. With passion and enthusiasm, we accept our divine inheritance of vibrant health, abundance, and unlimited joy. Everybody? I am alive, alert, awake, joyous, and enthusiastic. I celebrate the powerful rebirth of health and well-being within me today. Light a candle. Power. 
Power. Sorry. Power. Its color is purple. Its location is in the throat. Its disciple is Simon. What's with me? <laughs> I've been standing in front of this heater. And let me tell you, if you wanted to find heat in this room today, I just found it. <laughs> so, color is purple. Location is the throat. Disciple, disciple is Philip. The power of God surges through us when we are centered in the awareness of God. Affirming this truth with conviction releases the power to heal and bless our lives. I am a powerful light filled a beautiful child of God. With my powerful word, I call forth all good. Light a candle. Clearly, this makes, makes, missed the next side. Love. The color is pink. Its disciple is John. Imagine, it's in the heart. <laughs> Love is the pure essence of spirit that binds together the whole human family. It is the harmonizing sacred energy of all good flowing from our being at all times. Together, I am a radiating center of divine love. My life shines forth wholeness, harmony, and joy. Light a candle. Wisdom. Its color is yellow. Location in the solar plexus. Its disciple is James. True wisdom is spiritual intuition. The inner knowledge that God and I are one, and through this oneness with the one, nothing is impossible. Together, God is the light of my path. My way is made clear. I know what to do and how to do it. Light a candle. Order. Color is deep green. Its location is in the navel. Its disciple is James of Alphaeus. Order is God's idea of divine intelligence and divine harmony in perfect balance. This perfect marriage flows gently into our minds, our bodies, and our lives together. Through thought, word, and right actions, my life is in perfect order. Light a candle. Strength. Its color is light green. Location is in the lower back. Disciple is Andrew. Strength is the unfailing energy of God. It moves to us calmly and unimpeded by any condition outside of us. I am strong, whole, and well together. Through the silence of strength, I connect with all beings for healing of mind and body. We express healing and wholeness together. Light again. Elimination. Its color is russet. Location in the bowels. Its disciple is Thaddeus. Elimination is our innate divine power to let go of old, worn-out thoughts and conditions so that new ideas of good may take root in consciousness. Together, I let go and let the light of Christ fill my whole being with freedom, peace, joy, health, and well-being in mind and body. Light again. Finally, life, our 12th faculty. Its color is red. Its location is the reproductive glands. And its disciple is Judas Matthias. Well, it's first Judas and then later on Matthias. Divine life is pure, perfect, eternal. Spirit itself. The life of God is our life and we are perfect expressions of it. Together, I am alive, alert, awake, joyous, and enthusiastic about life. My body knows it, and I show it. Light a candle. Okay, now I'm here to debunk Christmas. <laughs> Using the words of Charles Fillmore, Unity's co-founder. Because I didn't feel my words would be valid enough, but I felt the founder of Unity, the pioneer of Unity, or co-pioneer. 
So Charles Fillmore wrote this, did this lecture in 1911. So it's been a while. But I liked what he said. So you'll forgive me if I read a lot of today's service, but it, it's, it's worthwhile listening to it. I certainly couldn't remember it all. Charles says, a man said to me yesterday, just what is the meaning of Christmas? I began to explain to him that Christmas was the celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ. And he said, well, what is the mus in there for? The M-A-S. What has that got to do with it? Well, I didn't know, and he didn't know. <laughs> I then began to look the matter up, and I found in the encyclopedia that in early times, they didn't celebrate the birth of great men or people, but their death. They didn't set them to celebrate the birth. They celebrated their death, and they said a mass for the death, and the celebration of Christmas originally was the celebration of the death of the martyr Stephen, and they celebrated with a mass. The word mass or moss means dismissal, that is, goodbye. It is the closing of a service, much as we would say the doxology. After many years of celebrating the death of Stephen, then they included St. John in the ceremony, and they didn't celebrate the birth of Jesus at all. How about that? Important to know these things. That was an afterthought because he didn't really know when Jesus was born. Uh, he was supposed to have been born in the spring in April, but as you know, we're celebrating in the midwinter, the 25th of December. All history is opposed to his having been born at that time. <laughs> How about that? Oh, what self will we're on riot will do. Uh, so, this is not the celebration of the birth of Jesus, nor did the early Christians so celebrate it. As we study the history of the different editions we have made to this celebration, we find that about nine-tenths of them originated in what is called paganism and were adopted from the pagans. Chris Kringle and Santa Claus, the early Christians, didn't know anything about Jesus. Chris Kringle was the god of the woods. The early Druids worshipped Kris Kringle at very early times, and in Germany, under the Roman rule, they had this god of the woods inveigled in into the house by bringing in a Christmas tree because he was supposed to be especially interested in trees. And if they brought the tree into the house, Kris Kringle would come in and bring them presents. Thoughtful. Uh, that was adopted from the pagans also. And as we follow the history of Christmas, we find the present-day celebration originated in the pagan rites and ceremonies. In this matter of celebrating Christmas, what should be the message to get at the real Christmas? Shouldn't it be that, cel that celebration of the angels, glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, goodwill to men, that is glorify God in the highest on the earth, and peace on the earth, and goodwill to men or people, as we say now. If we would all take this or that as a text for the next year and live by it, and when he says text, he means a reading, not a message on your phone. Uh, <laughs> if we would all take that as a text uh, for the next year and live by it, we would raise, I believe, the whole standard of thought in the world. If we could, if you could, if you could only get people to think about what it means. Of course, now we just chatter it off. Glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, goodwill to men. But we don't mean anything. You have to get that down in your subconscious and express it. Glorify God and you will have peace and you must have good will. Now, those spiritual emanations of the Christ mind are going forth. And by putting ourselves in the right relation to them, we are becoming part of that ever living one. You know that Christ is but another name for Jehovah, and Jehovah means the ever-living one, and it doesn't apply to a man or a god, but that ever-living principle. It is that masculine and feminine principle which exists in all things everywhere. It exists today. It is alive today as expressed in and through men. We don't mean look back 1911 years. We look into the omnipresent now for this life-giving one. And so, 
It doesn't negate that we celebrate the Christ awakened in us on December 25th. We can pick any day we want. The point is, it's not to honor the person. It's to honor the consciousness. It's to honor the good that's in us and can't not be in us. And so we don't throw the awareness of that away because somebody said something that I don't care for. But I know how easy it is to do that. When I came in today without heat here, believe me, I had judgments. <laughs> it impacted my mood, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> it's about, uh, there was a part in that other page I really wanted to point out. Let me make sure I find it. Yeah, the glory to God in the highest. Peace on earth, goodwill to men or people. Glory to God in the highest. You must first discover what is your God? Because God is different for every single one of us. You know, it would be nice, oh, we're in unity. We all have the same God. No, we don't. No, there is, I, I would be willing to bet you there is no church anywhere where every member has the same God. No church anywhere. They, every individual has a different understanding of God. I mean, growing up, I had an understanding of God that my mother gave me, and I don't remember who else talked about God in my house, quite frankly. I, was, I had to say, now I lay me down to sleep. And therefore became a scary God, because if I should die before I wake, that's not a pick-me-up. <laughs> <laughs> And it's not a, a balm to put me to sleep. Uh, so to look, at, to, to look at these things, glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, good will, goodwill to men. Now, Fillmore, later on in his preaching and stuff, he would say peace in earth, that this is earth, the body. Peace in earth, peace in my worldly experience. It's all the earth, all the physical is the earth for him. And so peace instead of on it, but think of it as peace in earth. But that glory to God in the highest. It doesn't say glory to Jesus in the highest. I think that people lame out their faith. They negate their power by putting it all on Jesus, the man. And I've got nothing against Jesus the man. I've got something against worshiping him. Well, even when we read in the Bible, his words, he's saying, don't do that. He is clearly saying, it's not me. It's the Father within. He, in the, you know, they were at the Father within. I don't know that he actually said the Father. He could very well have said the power within or the presence within. He could very well have said any of that. But it's, it's that thing within me that we need to be honoring because it's the thing that's within you and it's within you and you and you. Every It's within all of us, that power, that presence, that intelligence, that love that is within us all the time, all day, every day. And to get, it seems like to, for people to get away with wanting to place their faith, el faith elsewhere. I don't want to say lack of faith because it's not a lack of faith. We have all the faith we're ever going to have. Be very clear on that. It's not about getting more faith. It's about using what we have and directing it in the right directions. So if I'm directing my faith in my fear, I'm misplacing it from glory to God in the highest. And what is God? Really, what, what does it come down? Remember, it's a word, as I've said so many times. It is a word that we use to try to communicate what we can't actually communicate. Because, you know, the, the Jews and stuff, uh, other religions, you couldn't say the word God. But what that really means is it didn't mean anything because it was too small. It, it limited, it actually contracted what God is because God is the bigness that is. But it, nevertheless, I don't mind the word. I mind that when I say it to you, you're having a different vision than I'm having. 
But I could say that about a human being here on earth right now. Uh, you know, what, what, what's, who's the... Angela. There's no Angela in the room. Uh, <laughs> if I say the name Angela, perhaps to you, you're going to have a whole different understanding of Angela than I do, especially if you don't like Angela. <laughs> or if you do like Angela. It's not the one that spoke to you last night, is it? No. Wouldn't I be psychic? <laughs> Wouldn't that be the coolest thing? Uh, uh, <laughs> I'd be so impressed. Oh, spirit is about. And, uh, <laughs> uh, but... But but and if you like Angela and I come and say something disparaging about Angela, it's going to be like we still don't have the same understanding. And so with God, it's it's the same thing. We don't have the same understanding. We can only have the understanding we have according to the faith we place in it, not him, but it. And so, where are you placing your faith today? Are, is it, are you living a life of glory to God in the highest, meaning glory to your highest self? And, so, and if I am, here, here's, I don't have to defend myself. If I'm placing myself in the highest, there is no defense. I love, of course, the miracle says, if I defend myself, I am attacked. Well, have I been attacked because somebody said something stupid to me? Is their opinion so, so valid that it negates my Christ being because they inaccurately described me just now? No, but that doesn't mean I won't forget for at least a moment. I won't forget till I come to church again. It doesn't mean I won't forget, but forgetting doesn't mean the truth isn't true. The truth's always going to be true. Love is always going to be love, and that's part of the truth is always going to be true. Love is always going to be love. Peace is always going to be peace. Joy is always going to be joy. Life is always going to be life. If we would become willing to experience it rather than describe it, then we can be happy. Then we are free. Then these become aligned, what these represent, become aligned within us, the power within us that represent all the different aspects of who and what we are. And so this Christ Moss, it could be a way of, it is a ceremony of what we are releasing the mass part, the death of what is not ourselves. I'm liking this. Uh, the death of what is not ourselves. And the birth in our conscious mind of what is. So I was kind of saying, go tell it on the mountain that Christ is born today. Glory to God in the highest. Goodwill to man and peace on earth. Oh, Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Kenneth, Merry Christmas. I'm just going to sit right there. Thank you. I'm good. <laughs>